team would have to qualify for the mortgage. <clears throat> Usually, you know, a couple years of existence and showing earnings, showing money going in and out of it and showing viability, a bank's going to want to see that, right? The, the, the corporation itself would have to qualify. Otherwise, you know, in the beginning, you're going to hold the mortgage. Well, I mean, you could run a corporation where, uh, you know, you're the management of properties, uh, but you typically want your properties in a separate corporation from the management corporation. So uh, really, it's a question of time, right? You buy properties, you, a corporation holds the, the uh, deed in it, but you're holding the mortgage. And over time, uh, you build the relationships with the institutions and the corporation shows viability. It shows that it, it's running. It's you know paying its bills. Uh, then you know after establishing a period of time where the, the, the institution is, is comfortable, it'll start issuing mortgages to the corporation itself. Otherwise, I mean you're you're holding you're holding the mortgage. If the corporation is holding the mortgage, you got to understand for the institution, there's there's limited things that they can do. I mean, they they if the corporation is brand new and it's never done anything, and it, it, they look at it as a person, it's recognized like a person, right? The corporation. So imagine you having no credit history, trying to get a mortgage would be a problem, or no income, or no down payment. So it wants to see that the corporation has a history, it has assets. Uh, then the corporation itself can can. Uh, can get mortgages. So you're looking at a couple of years. It really depends on the institution, Rodrigo. So when you're when you're getting involved and you're trying to shift from, you know, that particular question, you just ask the institution, look, I want to, well, at some point I want the corporation to take on the mortgage. You know, when can I do that? You know, and what do you have to see? Let them tell you. Just be direct with them. Say, this is my this is my intention. What do I need to do? Is it going to take two years, five years? What do I have to show in the corporation? You know, what does it take? And they'll tell you if they deal in that kind of that kind of uh, uh, lending. So just be direct and ask them. Okay, hey folks, uh, Rodrigo, you good? Okay, so I have an opportunity to buy another two properties to hold. The institution could give me the other two mortgages. But Rodrigo, you, you want to ask the institution what they need to be able to hold the mortgage. So go to a broker, right, a mortgage broker, or if you have a relationship with a broker or a bank, just say, look, I want to put these properties I want the corporation to take on the mortgage. What do I have to do? And they'll tell you what's required. They'll tell you exactly what they need to see for it to happen. Now, some of them might say, well, you need a couple years. The corporation has to exist for a couple years. You know, uh, some might say there has to be assets in it. Whatever it is, they'll let you know. So just ask them directly, what do I need to do to be able to do that, to have these corporations hold it? Does that make sense? Okay, cool. No worries. Okay, folks, we're going to talk uh, stock market. We're going to continue with our training. Uh, I'm going to go through our, our basically the presentation that I, you know, that I, I use to teach people how to invest. Um, you know, uh, and we'll continue with that for the coming weeks, okay? So uh, let me, and you can ask questions anytime. I'm just going through the basics of, of investing. To get us to a point where we can start trading, 
right? Right now, it's just learning the basics and understanding how to do that. We'll get into more complicated you know, strategies uh, when the time comes, okay? So can everybody see my screen? Let me see. Okay, there it is. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. Okay, so everybody can see that okay? You still with me, folks? Can everybody hear me? There we go. <laughs> okay. All right. So we were talking about fundamental analysis. Price earnings is really the big thing. I told you to look for some, some you know, stocks that produce, uh, you know, 5% or better. It's, it's, you know, a lot out there. And now there's more because the market has gone down. Um, but as you start to, you know, invest and, and trade more specifically as a trader, it's very difficult to justify the investment in these companies because their earnings uh, get smaller and smaller over time. They only get bigger when the stock goes down and then you suffer the loss from the, from the uh, uh, stock price loss. Now, it doesn't only happen like that, but typically that's what it is. Stock goes down, price to earnings goes up, looks more, looks better, uh, P-E ratio looks better, uh, and you think, well, this is great, it produces earnings. But, uh, you know, companies are in the, you know, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 range uh, burning. So uh, it's difficult to justify investing in a company that produces very little in the way of earnings. Okay. So uh, we tend to, or, you know, I'm talking about uh, the way I trade and, and uh, trading that I'll be talking about is more technical analysis. So what we do there is we look at the patterns, these patterns based on the stock charts. And use things like support and resistance as an example to tell us, you know, what the market, you know, thinks about that stock at this time, right? And the great thing about a stock chart is it can't lie. It records all buying and selling. So it'll tell us where, you know, if there's insiders buying, we don't have to know who they are specifically, but we'll see an increase in volume or an increase in the movement up. If we see a lot of people selling, you know, hard, big volume selling, it'll tell us where the big money is, the smart money, you know, the insider money, whatever you want to call it. But we're, we're basically seeing who's ever active in this stock, what they actually think about this stock. And that's really what we tend to uh, use as a guide, as a technical trader, this is what we use as a guide to tell us, you know, should I, what kind of trade should I put on this particular stock? Now, you know, there's not many situations where you can't find a trade to take advantage of the stock, whether it's moving sideways, up or down. Uh, but ultimately, we, we use the stock chart to try to identify, you know, the movement, you know, to ensure that we're on the right side and the probability of the trade uh, to profit. That's what we're looking for. So, you know, we're going we're gonna to start to focus on technical trading now. So we have bullish uptrend, which is upward, and we have bearish downtrends. We were talking about bullish and bearish, but bullish being up, bearish being down. And, you know, uh, first thing we always want to do, and I want you to think of it in a macro, so uh, on the market, you want to identify the trend. Uh, you know, the trend to know the direction of the trade. So I got an idea. I got to know what it's doing. So the overall market, is it going up or is it going down? Is it a bullish market or a bearish market? That's what I want to know first and foremost. Identify support and resistance. Uh, we identify support and resistance to determine when to place the trade. You know, so this tells us, you know, this is in an uptrend. So there's a particular type of trades that we can use for that. This is down, particular type of trades we're going to use. And I identify if it's going sideways. There's a particular type of trade or trades that you can use to take advantage of that. We're not speculators in the sense of, you know, we're going to guess which way it's going to go. We're going to use the data that we have. And based on probability is what we want to lean towards. Based on probability, make a decision of what trade to put on. Nobody knows what the market's going to do day to day. There's just too many variables. Each individual trader really represents a variable, uh, so it's very it's impossible uh, to uh, to know exactly what's going to happen day to day. Identify the pattern. Uh, I do the pattern uh, to know the probability of profit. What we call that pop probability of profit. You know, based on that, we can start to establish. You know. You know what? What's my probability of making money, and how much money should I be looking for as, as in the way of target? Okay, so identify the trend of the market, uh, and then you know if it's going up, we should be looking for stocks 
uh, that are in an upward trend also, but going down the market, we should be looking to sell stocks that are going in that direction too. Uh, what are some of the examples of Sequoia Nutrition? We'll get into that. We'll definitely get into that, okay? So, so types of investors and traders. Um, day traders in and out with the same day. So usually they use things that are highly leveraged like Forex and futures. Uh, and, and, and you know, because you're a day trader, you want to maximize uh, smaller moves. That's why we use Forex and futures because you put a lot more into a trade with lo less money. Uh, we have swing traders and they, they run pivot to pivot, uh, which is over a period of weeks. Uh, you know, it could be a week or it's three weeks or six weeks. Pivot traders are looking for, for particular moves uh, based on pivots. Now, what, what is a pivot? A pivot would be like this, let me show you. So those are pivots, okay? Down here, that's a pivot. That's a pivot. You know, where it changes direction, that's a pivot. So swing traders want to, you know, trade these swings. These pivots, right? The ups and downs, ups and downs. That's what a pivot is, okay? So, oh, well, look, it's right there. <laughs> Those are pivots, okay? So, a position trader tries to capture the whole trend. So, they're trying to capture the whole trend. This is an upward trend. It's much, uh, it's longer. So, it could be a month, two months, three months. You know, uh, it's if you're trying to catch the whole move. Pivot traders or swing traders are trying to catch a couple of these. Just a couple of those. Those, those, uh, sorry, those, those moves, okay? So, uh, you know, a lot of times I tell, you know, people, look, uh, you know, if you're working nine to five, you can't be a day trader. <laughs> you know, it's a bad idea to be a day trader because day traders need to be, you know, available for the market to trade, you know, the day. Swing traders, you know, you could be work full time, working full time, nine to five, and be a swing trader, even a position trader. Um, you know, these typically take less time. Uh, to trade, you know, it could take you five, 10, 15 hours a month. Uh, day trader, you're spending, you know, you know, one, two to six hours, you know, uh, a day trading. Um, it's really a question of what can you do, you know, and if you can't day trade, don't worry about it. At some point you want to be a day trader, that's great, but focus on, you know, what you can do now. So most of you are going to be in a swing trade or position trade kind of uh, system that you're going to use to trade, okay? Now, uh, you know, uh, I'd like to show this example. If I bet $1,000 on black, what is the probability of me winning or losing? Um, you know, the reason I bring that up is is you want to look at probability. Now, you have 53% chance of losing $1,000, uh, you know, whether you bet on black or white, uh, because the casino has a slight edge uh, when you go to the casino. Now, it's not a huge edge, right? They, they just have a, you know, it's not 50-50, right, black or red, because they have the, the greens on there, and, and uh, you know, if it lands on there, it doesn't matter if you're black or white, you lose. Uh, but what's interesting about, about you know, this example of a roulette wheel, um, because the roulette wheel is set up with the probability of 53%, uh, probability of, of success, uh, Basically, whoever owns the roulette wheel is going to make money over time. Now, they're not going to make money necessarily every spin, uh, but over time and, and the longer that someone plays, uh, the more likely that probability is going to play out over time. So that 53% might seem small because 3% better than 50, uh, but that 3% is how casinos are built, right? So, uh, you know, we want to increase the probability when we trade. Uh, to allow us to be successful over time. Uh, we don't expect any individual trade uh, to make our year. You know, that's that's not realistic. So so you need to understand you want to trade small and you want to trade often, right? So your probabilities can play out. So instead of doing one spin and putting up all your money, like into one trade, you want 100 trades. You know, and over those 100 trades, if the probability you're doing your work, uh, the probability you're going to make money should make money over that time. So uh, you don't want you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. Uh, you don't want to risk your whole account on one trade. That's a bad idea in my opinion. Uh, you would rather trade, you know, uh, single contracts for options or maybe, you know, uh, 100 shares if you're going to use stock, which I'm not a fan of. But, you know, better to have 10 trades of 100 shares than 1,000 shares in one particular trade, right? You need to spread out your money 
and, and let probability do its thing. Okay, so we want to trade, we want to trade small, we want to trade often. Okay, so 40% uh, chance of winning, that's your percentage. Your chance of winning is 47% chance. So the key here to understand is, is this roulette reel represents a system, right? And if you let the system, you know, it keeps spinning that wheel and you let the system play, you're going to make money over time. This is what the casinos depend on, right? As long as they keep you playing, they're going to take your money, right? That's, that's, that's the whole uh, model. Now, uh, if I give you the roulette wheel and you're the casino, will you make money? Well, yeah, you'll make money. You'll make money no matter what because it's not you uh, that's important in this scenario. It's the system that you use, right? And if the roulette wheel is geared to a 53% chance of probability of success uh, as the casino, you're the casino now. Are you going to make money? Sure you are. Over time, you're going to make money just like the casino would. Now, that being said, uh, if, if that's true, why do casinos go bankrupt? Well, casinos go bankrupt because even if you have a good system and all the games, pretty much all the games in the casino uh, have a slight probability of success for the, for the casino itself. So how do casinos go bankrupt, right? If every game is basically geared to profit over time. Uh, the, the reality is, even if you have a good system, if you don't manage that system, you're going to lose money. So even a good system, if the management's bad, no matter what you, you how good the system is, you're going to lose money. Okay, so it's not just the system; it's management of the system, right? So you manage to do, let the system do what it's supposed to do. Don't get in in the way of the system. So often traders uh, lose money even with a, a successful system because they get in the way their emotions get in the way um they they try to argue with the market they try to get money back from the market that they you know they over traded or more specifically they put too much money in one position and they want the money back and they expect you know they can see the casino the the, the uh, uh stock market to give it back to them that's not what you want to do so you know it's it's a combination of the discipline to run the system this is very key. You have no chance, in my view, in trading if you have no discipline. You know, you're better off going to Vegas. You know, have some fun. You know, because if you have no discipline, you're going in the stock market. Uh, inevitably, you're gonna you're gonna blow up your account. You're gonna lose everything you got. So, uh, it's not somewhere you want to go unless you're you know you're you're you have a, a good system and b you display discipline. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? You need to have discipline. Or the market's the last place you want to be. Yeah, you can get lucky so many times in the market, but at some point it'll take it all away. So discipline plus a good system is what makes you successful. It's not just having a good system. Okay, you have to have discipline. Okay, so when we're looking at you know probability of patterns, certain patterns, right? It's really this simple. There's patterns that you recognize. Um, and you assume that they're going to continue on that trend for at least a period. So we have triangle, circle, triangle, circle, triangle. You know, imagine that as a pattern, a stock pattern. Uh, what should we expect to come? Well, we expect the circle to come, right? There's a high probability that the circle is going to be the next one in this pattern. You know, star, star, arrow, star, star. We're going to assume that the arrow is going to come next. Now, does this guarantee these things are going to come? No. But, but the good thing or the great thing about, I think, about trading is, Anybody can be a trader because anybody can recognize patterns, you know, uh, over time. You learn, you learn what these patterns look like and you apply the right strategy to it. And over time, you know, you'll make money. Uh, that's, that's what we're, we're looking or pushing forward with, okay? So, uh, you know, it, it is the most, most effective. So financial education. So obviously, you know, education. And this is, I'm continuing to, you know, make sure that you guys understand that education is the most important thing. So financial education is what we should be looking for before you actually trade. Okay, this is very, very important. You have to learn how to play this game before you do it. Okay, you have no reason to be in the financial markets if you do not understand how to trade. Okay, so give me one second here. Does anybody have any questions? At this point, anybody have any questions? What happened?
Labs he recommended Query Plus Query, Well Simple CD. Uh, really, platforms we'll talk about later. Okay, I don't want to get into platforms right now. Uh, if you want it, if you want a paper trade or open a paper trading account, that's fine. You can use any one you want. Uh, I like, uh, or I'll what the stuff I show you is is uh, interactive brokers. I'm not suggesting that you invest with interactive brokers or use them as your broker. That's just one that I use. Uh, you can use uh, Thinkorswim. Uh, these are good platforms. Some of the platforms are just uh, better for traders versus investors. You know, people that are just buying and holding for a long period of time. They're really, I mean, any one of them that you've listed it probably works. Uh, you know, it, if you're a trader, though, you have to look at other things. You know, the, the, the dynamic platform that they have, the cost of a transaction, those things matter. So we can get into that. But if you want to open up a paper trading account, you know, absolutely, go ahead. Excuse me. Okay, so let's continue on with technical analysis. Any other questions? So we'll get into we'll get into you know platforms uh, later. Right now, I just let's learn the basics of it. But if you want to open up a paper trading account, I don't think that's bad. You know, paper trading accounts are most most effective in teaching you how to use a platform, not on profitability. So because you make money on a paper trading account, it's not the same thing as money. Uh, you know, uh, you got to deal with emotions when it comes to money, and, and we're very, very emotional about money. So uh, it won't tell you necessarily because you made a zillion dollars or millions of dollars off a paper trading account that you're going to make millions doing it with real money. So if you're, you're going to use a paper trading account, which I think is wonderful, um, you should use it to learn the platform, not necessarily for profitability. You know, you know, how do I put it in a trade with this platform? Am I doing it right? What I think I'm doing, does it happen? You know, that's that's really the value of a, of a paper trading account, okay, in my view. All right, so I'm going to share my screen again. We're going to continue with technical analysis. All right. Okay, so, so uh, we're going to continue here. All right, so technical analysis. Uh, let's look at... Uh, Candles, which is a very common, you know, tool that we use. Uh, you know, what do these candles mean? If you've never seen a stock chart before, or you've seen them and you wonder what these candles mean, green and red, uh, and you can change the color of these on, on, on a stock chart. But typically, you know, the green and red is very common. Uh, used by active traders as technical analysis, it's easy to identify based on color and size. So these these candles represent what happened in a period so it could be a day a week you know even a year uh it could be a minute you know these candles uh represent what happened in that time period so if you look at a daily chart which is let's you know each candle represents one day it tells you you know what happened in the market that day just from this candle it tells you quite a bit of information actually in this in this you know one candle it'll tell you four different things okay uh, and a little bit more if you read into it, okay? So greenish is bullish, reddish is bearish. So, you know, a down day would be red, an up day would be green, okay? So when we look at these candlesticks, the bullish candle, uh, price closed higher than the open, okay? So these are the four things that you see. So, so when, you know, it opened here, down here it opened, okay? So down here. Ooh. Okay, so it opened down here. This is where it opened. Okay, so the market opened, you know, or the stock opened here, and it closed here. Okay, it closed here. That's what makes it a green candle. Okay, so it, it had to close above its open. So it opened at $25. Okay, that's when it opened. That was the open. It closed at $27. Okay, $27. That would be a green candle. Okay. Now, the low and the high are the lowest point that day and the highest point that day, the stock rate, okay? So the low could be uh, $24, okay, was the low, and $28 was the high, okay? $28 was the high, okay? Uh, but $25 is where it opened and $27 is where it closed. Now, the stuff in between here and here, you know, who knows? You know, sometime during the day, 
stock went all the way down to $24 and all the way up to $28, you know, but it, we know for sure it opened at $25 and it closed at $27. We know, you know, absolutely went up to $28 and absolutely went to $24. What happened during the day? Did this happen at the beginning, the end, the middle? You know, did it happen in the last hour? We don't know, right? But we do know the tops, the bottoms, and the open, the close. That's what makes this candle green, okay? So a bearish candle is, is the opposite, right? It's the opposite in the sense that, uh, you know, we have the open. Oops. We have the open. So well, let's use purple. So it opens here and it closes here. That means it, it opened higher than it closed. So in this case, the stock opened, say, at $20, $20 and it ended at $18, okay? It had to be lower than the open, okay? So it started at $20, ended at 18 Also, the high and the low, same as the, as the green candle, it might have went up to $21, right? And it might have went down to $17. You know, but it, it, it closed at 18. So we know when we see a red candle, it opened higher than it closed. It opened higher than it closed, okay? Again, we don't know what happened in here. This could have happened, you know, beginning, middle, and we don't know what the movement is. But we know those four key things, right? It got up to $21. It got as low as 17. It opened at 20. It closed at 18, okay? So the, those, are the, those are the things that, you can see just from that one candle, okay? Okay, any questions about that? I suppose the high and the low, significant volatility. Yeah, exactly. It'll tell you about, you know, you know what's the range of the stock. Yeah, for sure. It'll tell you about volatility. The main thing I would say, and I don't want to get too, too deep into it right now, is to understand that for whatever reason, when this got to $21, you know, the sellers pushed it down, right? They thought too expensive, the sellers pushed it down, you know? But we also know that when it got to, to 17, the buyers came in, right? The buyers came in and pushed it up, you know? So it tells us a story. It tells us that, you know, what do they feel about the stock? Well, they feel clearly, you know, 17 is too low, uh, 21 is too high. But they also tell us that, that the, for that day at least, there was more selling than buying, right? There was people that felt you know, it was time to get out or there was people that you know, are betting on the stock to continue to go down. So that, that you know, the high and the low matter. Same thing over here. For whatever reason, the buyers came in here, pushed it up. Uh, the sellers came you know, over here to push it down. You know? But at the end of the day, the buyers controlled the day, right? The buyers, you know, still had enough energy. And it takes energy to move these the stock, right? There was, an, there was enough new money coming in, and that's what's causing it to go up, that people were willing to pay more uh, than the sellers, uh, you know, were offering. They, they wanted to continue to buy uh, up, up to at least 27. Uh, they went all the way to 28, but, you know, got pushed down. Again, we don't know when that happened, but we know for sure there was there was new money coming into the stock that's what made it up when this you see a red one it means money's leaving the stock that's what's happening money's leaving the stock so it's something that you definitely want want to recognize the value of this you know little candle tells you a lot about what at least people felt that day about it and we're assuming that this is a daily a daily chart okay so there's lots of patterns you can you can buy books on this actually you can go online and you know you can read about it there's tons of patterns uh, I believe this was originated in Japan to track rice prices uh, buying and selling rice the rice market uh, so this has been around for a long long time you know, I can't remember the gentleman that brought it to the U S but this was not what they used in the U S they used something uh, different. Uh, but the candle has really been the benchmark for a lot of traders on tracking the market movements. So all these things mean, mean different things, you know, and, and there's so many, so many patterns. I, you know, there's a couple patterns that I think are worth looking at. We'll start with the simple, you know, simple patterns. Big candles and small candles tell you about momentum. Really, I think that's, that's all you got to, you know, look at at this point. So 
you know, if we see a, a small candle like this, it's an up candle, that's nice, doesn't tell us on its own, it doesn't tell you much. And no candle really tells you too much on its own. Um, when we see the second candle, you know, continue to push up, we see a bigger candle, right? So we have this candle, we have a bigger candle, and they're going in the same direction. And then we have even a third bigger candle. This is telling us that there's more momentum, the continued momentum into this stock, right? But what we see as often, you know, we see things, if it goes up, it's got to come down at some point. We see the momentum start to wane, it starts to slow down. So we went from small to bigger to bigger, uh, and then it started to get smaller again, right? So, so the, the momentum, we're losing momentum on pushing the price up on this particular stock. And then we see an even smaller one. So we started with a little bit of momentum, it started to increase, increase, and then it started to slow down. Then we see one of these, these guys, and, and the one, you know, we call this, and it's almost a, a perfect one, a doji. And doji means indecision. So they tried to push the price up, uh, the sellers pushed it down, but they really, you know, the sellers couldn't push it down too low, and the buyers couldn't push it up too high. And the buyers won that day, they're, they're a little bit higher. But that's, this is the point where we have consolidation. There's the sellers, they're meeting serious resistance by sellers now, uh, where here they were just doing whatever they wanted. They just kept on buying, buying new money, new money, new money. And at some point, people were saying, well, this is, this is too expensive. Um, let's sell it. Uh, let's sell what we have, or let's sell to see it go down. So this momentum, you know, you start to see a way, it's just based on size of the candle, right? The candle, small candle to bigger candles, increase momentum. So stop losses, we have to talk about, we'll talk about them at some point right now. I don't want to, I don't want to get into that. But stop losses are basically, uh, you know, a place that we put on a stock. It's a, an order that we put on a stock to ensure that if the stock goes in the wrong direction, there's a maximum loss that we're willing to take. That's what stop losses. As it moves up, you, you obviously want to trap some profit. You know, the stop loss is here, thinking, okay, if the stock goes down here, I want out. But as the stock goes up, you don't want to just leave your, your, your stop here. You want to move it up, right? As this goes up, you want to move it up to trap some profit so you do take the money. Um, the next day, we see a red candle. It's relatively the same size as this one, but it's, it's showing a reversal, possible reversal. And then we see the big fat red candle. Uh, and then this is called the gap, right? It just closed that day on Monday. Tuesday we woke up and it opened down here, right? Something happened and it was much lower. Any questions about that? So that's just, just candles, like looking at, there's lots of patterns, uh, but these, these, you know, just learn, learning and understanding the size of the candles uh, is, is, it can tell you a lot. The other candle I would tell you that, you know, is worth paying attention to, I don't want to get too crazy right now about it, is this candle, okay, which is similar to these two candles, right? So what this means, if you see a candle like this, okay, what does it mean? Well, it means the open, right here, the open was the same as the close, okay? The open was the same as the close. So where it opened, it closed. And it tells us that, you know, they tried to push the stock up, they got pushed down, they tried to, you know, push it down, it got pushed up. So there was pressure going up and pressure going down. And they couldn't, you know, they couldn't agree, you know, because they're always disagreeing the buyers and sellers, right? They couldn't, you know, the buyers couldn't push the price above that point and the sellers, you know, you know, the open and the close basically were the same. So it doesn't have to be exactly the same, but this is called a doji. This is called a doji, and it just means indecision, okay? Doji. Just means indecision. That's all it means. So they're undecided, and in, in, in why we like this particular one, uh, some of us, this particular pattern, okay? It's called a doji, this little this candle, is because it shows a possible reversal, okay? Reversal. Stock was going in one direction. It might reverse. There's an indecision point. So here, when we look at this, we start to see possibly, oops, possibly a doji showing indecision. Okay, showing indecision. Okay. All right. So now that going back to your question about support and resistance, here's some examples. So as the stock goes up, 
uh, if it gets pushed back down, selling starts to come in and goes back down. Well, we know that we've hit a resistance point, right? And underneath, it's a support point. Why? Because as the stock goes down, it hits this price, this $80 price right here, this $80 price, and what happens? People start buying. But as it gets to $90, for whatever reason, the sellers start coming in, and they sell. So we start to see this pattern of buying and selling, buying and selling, you know, and that is that is basically support and resistance, right? So the selling on top is resistance, so resisting the stock from going up, and the buying is support, right? When when the stock gets down to that place, uh, a group of buyers or you know an institution, somebody's coming in and saying, you know what? At that price, I'll buy whatever you got. I'll buy as much as you can sell me at eighty dollars. I'll buy. And the sellers are saying, I'll sell, you know, whatever you're buying. You know, when you're buying, I'll sell you as much as you want at 90, you know. So when it gets to 90, they get the push down. And when it gets to 80, as it comes down, it gets to 80, people come in and start buying it, okay. So, you know, we typically see support, and we can see support and resistance. But if we go back to this, this is a sideways pattern. We do see this pattern often. Uh, stocks go up, down, and sideways. So this is a sideways pattern. Uh, but we'll also see this type of support resistance. So, you know, it went up and it sold, you know, it sold here and it came down and then we see buying coming in and it ripped through this sell point and it goes up above, and, you know, and it pushes across that resistance. So what happens is, what we see is this, this, this upward pattern. And what's interesting about it is you start to realize, well, wait a minute. Here was resistance, right? Um, this is the point of resistance. So what happens is when the stock breaks through resistance, which was really this point, what you see is resistance becomes support, right? So it goes up, hits resistance, comes down, the buy comes in, gets pushed, and it rips through that, that selling that would have been there. And it goes up above, and then it starts, you know, selling comes in again, right, at some point. And when it comes down, that point where there was selling becomes a point of buying. So support, uh, or sorry, resistance becomes support, that same level. So you'll see a stock go up, down, break through, come down. And where they were selling before, the buyers come in. And the buyers are in control of this right now. And that support becomes, uh, sorry, that resistance becomes support. What does it do? We see again, you know, there's the resistance point right there, and the stock comes up and it rips through that resistance. And what happens? It gets to a certain point, the sellers come in again, and then we see, you know, we expect that there's going to be buying right, you know, right here. There's going to be buying, okay? Because support, sorry, resistance becomes support, okay? Any questions? Does that make sense to everybody? Any questions? No, we're good. Okay. All right. So, so a prudent trader never argues with the tape. Markets are never wrong. Opinions often are. Often are. If you're looking for a book to read, my favorite book of all time is uh, about trading and investing. Is Reminiscences of a Stock Operator. Reminiscences of a Stock Operator. It's about this guy Jesse Livermore. Uh, you know, a trader and his, his story, somebody, you know, interviews him and basically talks about his, you know, asks him about his trading and he goes into a long story, which is the book of his his life as a trader. He's been he traded for decades. So, you know, it's it's one of his rules is, you know, a prudent trader never argues with the tape. Markets are never wrong. Opinions often are. Even, you know, if a stock's going up and you think, wow, this is crazy, you know, Tesla shouldn't be going up, you know. So what that you think Tesla should be going up? It's still going up, you know. If if you know if a stock's going down, you're like, oh, this stock is worth so much more, uh, you know, I should buy it. Um, you know, obviously the market doesn't think that the stock continues to go down. So he, what he's trying to the point he's trying to make is you shouldn't have any opinions uh, about the market if the market's going up. Uh, buy it if the market's going down sell it you know it's it's not you're not enough or important enough to, to change the direction of the stock it takes a lot of energy 
to change the direction of a stock, uh, you individually are basically powerless at moving it. You know, and you shouldn't be worrying about trying to move a stock. You should be trying to take advantage of whatever movement's happening at that time. Okay, so uh, if a stock you know is going up, uh, let's buy it. If a stock you know is going down, you know let's look to sell it or take the opportunity to find a trade that fits it. Let's not buy things that are falling down. Let's not sell things that are going up. You know, we want to take advantage of that motion. So, so you know, you might hear this or heard this before. The trend is your friend. You know, the trend is your friend. You know, if it's going up, be friends with the trend. The trend's up, buy. You know, uh, going down, trend's down. You know, let it be your friend. Sell. Uh, the trend is your friend until the end. You know, until this stops. You know, stick to whatever it's doing. Don't try to outsmart the market. You don't have enough money to do that. The, the greatest, you know, largest hedge funds uh, and institutions lose money in the market every day. So, you know, these people have access to massive information. Uh, their big problem is they have too much money to, 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 to put into the market at one time. And it's harder to, to deal with a larger account than a smaller, you know, amount of money. So... Uh, often, you know, that trying to figure it out, uh, it, they're wrong often, you know, this is, this is the game. So this is why, again, going back to the point I was saying earlier, uh, you're better off to trade, in my opinion, of course, this is all my opinion, I'm telling you, you know, my trading or how I look at trading, uh, it's better, you're better off trading small and often, small and often uh, to let probability take its course, okay? Be the casino, uh, have trade management, and a good system, and, and you should be able to be profitable. Okay. So trends and patterns for support and resistance. Uh, so we'll see. You know, remember the the candles that we saw. We'll see some momentum, and then all of a sudden, you know, a doji or something where there's you know some resistance. You see it fall down, and then you know we, we looked at this trend. It's the same thing: higher highs and higher lows. This is important. How do I know it's a bullish trend? Well, I have Higher highs and higher lows, right? Higher high and higher lows. This high is higher than the previous high, and the low is higher than the previous low. That's how you know it's going up. Does that make sense? So, so higher highs, higher lows. You can write these down. Bullish uptrend, right? It's a buy signal, uh, you know, or to use a strategy that takes advantage of of, of the bullish movement. Uh, you know, higher high, higher low, higher probability of, of profit, pop, right? Higher probability of profit. Uh, support resistance, you know, smaller candles help me understand where to buy and sell. So, you know, where to put my trade on. So we see these higher highs and higher lows. We can start to, and obviously the probability, um, at least, you know, obviously we're looking backwards here. The probability is a continued upward trend until, until we see this trend break. We should believe it's going to continue to go up. Okay, there's no, you know, I know it's going to, you know, go to this price and it's not going to go higher. That's that's an opinion. You know, the market will decide. Uh, so so obviously a bearish trend is the opposite. So we, what do we see? We see lower lows and lower highs. So it comes down here, it goes up, and you can see from this point to this point, that's a lower high, right? So lower high. Right, and then a lower low, right? The low was here, now it's lower, right? It's lower than the worst point, it's even worse. You know, when it tries to go up, you know, it can't get above the previous high. So what do we see? We see a reverse pattern here, a downward pattern, lower lows, lower highs, lower low, lower high, lower lows, right? And lower high. That's a downward pattern. So again, it's the same concept, right? That's a seller pattern or a downward pattern, and, you know, we're looking for the pattern that shows lower highs and, and lower lows, and, and this is going to tell us, you know, that the probability is on the downside, and we can start to establish the probability of profit. You know, how much money can I make on this move, okay? So scoring this is small candles help me understand where to buy or sell or where we can establish some, you know, highs and lows in the market, okay? So this is... Uh, uh, one particular uh, method of trading, uh, I'll show you, it's called the SET method, okay? So SET uh, establishes, uh, S stands for stop loss, you can write these down, 
T stands for entry, and T stands for target. So I'll give you a minute, a few minutes to write that down, okay? So you can write that pattern down. Uh, so stop, S stands for stop loss, E stands for entry, you know, where am I going to enter, and T stands for target. So in the set method, you know, it's telling you exactly what to do, right? This is a system. Stop loss is half of ATR under support. E is entry, we'll see the current market price. And T is target, uh, take support plus pay, uh, probability, uh, and we'll talk about what pay is, okay, in a second. Let's write them down. So when you've written it down, you type in yes for me. Or why? So I know everybody has it. So I got five, tell me they got it. One, two, three, six now. Seven. I think they have 12 people, so I'm looking for 12 of those. Two, four, six, eight, seven, eleven. I think one or two more people. This is an exercise that I'm gonna I'm gonna leave you with to 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 figure out how to set up one of these trades. Okay, you don't have to know much about the stock market to actually apply this system, but it's a system and and, and uh, it's based on certain rules and you follow the rules and and you know the idea is you know the system the roulette wheel will make you money. Okay, so as an example, this trend. You see $80 is, is here where it starts, goes up to 88, goes down to 85, goes up to 95, goes to 90, right, comes down to 90, it goes up to 91, okay? The ATR is $2. So based on this information, you can actually set up this trade. You can use the set method to set up the trade. You have all the information you need to set up the trade. Now let me explain what a couple of things are. ATR is average true range, average true range. So everybody write down ATR equals $2. You don't even have to understand or know what ATR is um, because the rule right there tells you what to do. Okay, But ATR is $2. Average true range is telling you the average move, if we're using a daily, the average move per day is around $2 from top to bottom. So the stock moves up and down $2 on average. Uh, usually ATR is set up on 14 day average. So over the last 14 days, the average move up and down was $2. We don't know exactly where it stopped, so, you know, what the open was, what the close, but from the top to the bottom, it ranges up and down $2. So it might go from, you know, 19 to 21, you know, today. Tomorrow it goes from uh, 20 to 22. You know, the next day it goes from 21 to 19. You know, it goes up and down roughly $2. That's the average, okay? So that's what ATR is, okay? So it says stop loss is one half of ATR. So what's one half of ATR? What's one half of ATR? There you go. So a dollar, okay? So we know one half of ATR is $1, okay? So this ATR is $1, okay? Uh, $1, okay? What is uh, under support? Well, what is support, right? Well, we know that's last support. The support we know is, is here, right? That support, you know, that support right here. Uh, and that support, right? That's resistance up there, okay? So this is down, this is resistance, okay? But here, these represent support. So it's saying stop loss is one half ATR under support, okay? The last support. So there's your last support, okay? 
E is entry. I'll give you that one, right? The entry is going to be $91. Okay, I'll give you that one. And T is target. So, so support plus pay. What's pay stand for? Potential average yield. Potential average yield. Well, how do you come up with potential average yield? Okay, so the potential average yield is what's the average of these moves? So, so in this move from here to here, right, it moved how much? Eight dollars. Okay, and from here, 85, right, from here to here, how much did it move? From 85, it moved ten dollars. Okay, so it moved, oops. It moved, it moved eight dollars here. Oh, it moved eight dollars here. Uh, here it is. Okay, so it moved eight dollars here and ten dollars here. What, what does that mean? All right. Whoops, I didn't want to show you that. Uh, but this thing does not want to help. So entry is 91, I'll give you that one, okay? So, okay, so uh, here, $8 was the move. Here, $10 was the move, okay? Okay. Okay, so $10. And this is a different yellow. Anyways, ten dollars. So average, you're averaging potential average yield. Your first move was eight. Your second move was ten. What's the average of these two? What's what's the average? It's nine dollars. That's right. So your average, your average potential average yield is nine dollars. Okay. So so I'm gonna assume that the stock is gonna move nine dollars. Okay. I'm gonna assume it's gonna move on its next move about nine dollars that's what i can do eight here ten here i'm going to take the average i'm going to assume the next move is going to be nine dollars so based on that and based on what i shared with you you know what is the stop loss so what should be your stop loss what should be your stop loss point so s what should s be i'll give you a few minutes to do that okay S, your stop loss should be 100. Is that what you're saying? No, remember, stop loss is one half ATR under support. Eighty nine is correct. Yes, eighty nine is where. So you're going to be one dollar because that's half of ATR, right? Half, you know, half of ATR equals if I divide that you know half of that half of that <laughs> is one dollar okay so I'm gonna take the last known support ninety dollars and I'm gonna I'm gonna put a stop loss right stop loss of eighty nine dollars what does that mean it means if the stock goes to eighty nine dollars I'm out the, the trend is failed I'm out $89. Okay. So the stop loss point is $89. Okay. The entry we already know it's $91. It's just where the market is. It's $91. Okay. $91. Okay. What's the target? You can tell me the target. What's the target? 99. Anybody else? What does it say? It says support plus potential average yield. What's the potential average yield? Nine dollars. What's the last support point? Ninety dollars. Right? So actually it's it is it is ninety-nine. Okay? The reason is it's not where you come in, it's where the last support was. So it's not a hundred, it's not ninety-one plus nine. Right, and it's not nine plus eighty-nine, right? Where the where the stop loss is. It's just where last support was. Last support was ninety, so I take ninety plus the nine dollars. That gets me the ninety-nine. Does that make sense to everybody? 
Anybody have any questions or confused about this example? It's okay if you are. Who has a question? Anybody have a question? So the key is is practice, right? So you know this is something you'd you'd want to practice over and over again to 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 use this method to you know set up a trade, okay? But you know we're not and I don't want to say too much about more about this method. Just just I want you to learn and understand that a system will tell you what to do. You just follow the system, right? You have to be disciplined and follow the system. So you know we have all the information we need on that uh, on those stock charts to tell us you know how to set up a trade you know entry exit and profit target okay so so okay so let's do this Let me see if I got another one. Oh. Hold on. let's do this I'm gonna I'm gonna do I'm gonna take out this and let's do this let's go Okay, so so we're almost at the end of our session tonight. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this for you. Okay, I'm gonna give you some homework. If nine is the average, then isn't there only 50% chance of hitting that target? No, no, that nine is. Why would you say a 50% chance? I'm not sure. I know what you mean by that. Because because there was only two two numbers you're using. Is that what you mean? The probability is not based on the, the average. The probability is based on, you know, is this going up or is it going down? If it's an upward trend, there's a higher probability that it's going to continue to go up. If it's in a downward trend, we're going to believe it's going to continue to go down. There's a higher probability, right, because it's going down. The probability of it hitting $9, uh, I can't say what the exact percentage is, 50 or, you know, nobody knows. But you do know that the first time it moved $8 and the second time it moved 10 you know, we're, we're doing an educated guess based on the actual move. So is it a 50-50 chance that it's going to get to 9? I, I, can't, I can't say exactly how you're coming up with that number. Um, I think you're thinking because it's two swings. But the probability of it hitting 9 is, is let's say this, is greater than 50% based on that trend. How's that? I can't tell you the exact uh, probability. And even if I could, I couldn't tell you, you know, you know I couldn't tell you that you know, is is the stock going to hit that price or even go higher? I can't tell you that. We don't know the future, but we do know, you know, based on probability, if you play the, the you know probability game, you know, over time you should make money if the system is successful. Does that make sense? Okay, good. Yeah, you want to. Yeah, you want to. You want to. You want to have. I would say in this method, you want to have at least you know two of these. You want two of these, right? Two of these swings we call them. Okay. Let me just do that again. So that's one swing. That's one swing. That's the second swing. Okay. So so I want to see. What do I want to see? I want to see. A higher high and higher low, right? That's what I want to see. So I want to see a higher high and higher highs up here, and I want to see higher lows. That's an upward trend, right? That's an upward trend, okay? So this is what I want you to do for homework, okay? Here's the set method. We know what those mean. You wrote everybody wrote them down, right? So I'm going to give you new numbers, and you're going to do another trade, okay? Okay? So let me give you the numbers. Okay, so let me back this up, make it nice and big so you can see it. Okay. So here we have 40 and 45. Write these down. I have 42 and 50. Okay. And I have it comes down here to. Uh, oops. 48, okay, and the current price is 49, okay. So based on that, in this ATR on the stock is uh, 
amount, we'll go with $2 again. Okay, ATR is $2. This is the up and down that you know, and I want you to set up the trade. So set, I want to know the stop loss, the entry, and the target for next week. Okay, I want you to, to, to do this as homework, okay? Ever, anybody have any questions about the homework? Everybody have the example written down. So 40, 45, 42, 50, 48, 49. Okay, so you have it, good. Everybody give me a yes so you have it. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Seven, I got a few more people. Don't worry if you don't understand exactly, you know, trading or how this works. Just follow the system, write down your questions, and we'll talk about it next week, okay? Don't get frustrated. Have fun. You don't know what you're doing, that's okay. Try it, doesn't work, that's fine. We'll get into it next week, okay? Does anybody need more time? Okay, we're gonna wrap up our session. If you're good, type in uh, type in the letter uh, T for trader. If you're good, T for trader. Okay, T for trader, good. Awesome, awesome. Uh, okay, last thing I'm going to talk about uh, is uh, Rob, you had a question just with regards to my email sent the other day. A few questions I wanted to ask to be able to run the back forth. Okay, so so Rob was asking me some questions about he's in our trading program. He's done some courses. So Rob, uh, you still with us, yes? Good. So what I would tell you is is uh, right now, I think that you know uh, options one and two are the most important right now. I wouldn't worry about facts, uh, you know, right now futures and 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 commodities and trading. I you know I wouldn't worry about that right now. I just would like you to focus on option trading. Okay, so spread trading, cover calls, you know, that's all covered in options one and option two. That would be my suggestion is to get your arms around options, okay? And I'm going to talk about options in the coming weeks, okay? You can, yeah, you can get to lead options. If you do options one and options two, you're good. You should be able to make money. I'd rather you do options one and options two, make some money, and then if you want to do more courses, you can do more courses. But right now, I just want you to focus on what's going to make you money now, okay? Does that make sense? So options one, options two, that's it. And let's make some money there. And once you make some money and more money, you can get more courses, all right? No worries, my friend. No worries. All right, we're going to wrap it up, folks. I'll see you all next week. Reminiscences of a Stock Operator. That's right. Reminisce. Great book. It's on audio. You can get it at uh, Audible. It's an awesome, awesome book. It'll blow your mind. It blew my mind. I, I just listened to it again the other day. I probably listened to that book. I would say at least, at least a dozen times, at least. So it's it's really really good. When is a when is real estate class? What do you mean real estate class? Like the weekly classes I the weekly calls I do is that what you mean, Nick? Yeah, Nick, I suspended those for now just because of what's going on with the market. You know, if you have questions though, reach out. You know, uh, and I'll take questions on this on this call, right? Uh, I usually ask at the beginning, uh, but I mean, if you have questions about real estate, I mean, we still do real estate. Just right now, uh, real estate is is kind of suspended. But Nick, I mean, any questions, you reach out, okay? No problem. What happens to the April videos on YouTube? They're not showing. That's my bad, Audrey. I I, I got to upload them all. I get, well, the the stock ones primarily. What have I been doing? So. Uh, my apologies. Hold me to task. I should have them up by this weekend, okay? And if I don't, you give me you give me trouble, okay? <laughs> when I see you on Monday uh, and, and 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 Wednesday, okay, folks. I'm gonna wrap it up. Uh, have a great week. If you have any questions about real estate or stock, um, you know, let me know. Let me know, and and uh, and uh, I'll be happy to help. Otherwise, we're gonna continue focusing on what we can do right now. The opportunity looks like in the stock market. Uh, real estate still obviously a viable opportunity. 
when it when it when you know the market sells down and we get a better understanding of what the market's going to do when this is uh, you know when the market's opened up again, we'll definitely take advantage of the opportunities that are there. Okay. All right, folks. Uh, Augustine, you said trouble. It is. What you, oh, trouble it is. I get you now. <laughs> Give me trouble. <laughs> All right, folks. Have a great week. Uh, you need anything? Let me know. Okay. Have a great great night and a great weekend. Stay safe. And uh, I'll talk to you all on Monday for our 8 o'clock, uh, 30 minute, just updating the market, okay? Have a great week, folks, and work on your homework.